Shades of the 1990s United Center here tonight on WOSN for high school boys basketball action. Tonight we are not in Chicago. We are in Minster, Ohio, as Mr. Wildcats hosting the Delphus St. John's Blue Jays in high school boys basketball action. Good evening, everyone, alongside Nate Garlock. I'm Patrick Campbell, and a big match matchup. Delphi St. John's 14-2, unbeaten in the MAC, looking to uh, maintain that against the Minster Wildcats. Wildcats uh, coming up here. They have won the last seven games in a row and uh, looking to keep it rolling. Should be a good matchup tonight here in the MAC. Yeah, absolutely. Should be fantastic matchup tonight. As you mentioned, Delphi St. John's having a fantastic season. Only two losses on the year coming in tonight. Undefeated in conference play. Minster, though. You know, they got off of that slow start in the last seven in a row, though. They have had victories. Not quite, you know, it's been a little bit hard to tell what type of Minster team you've been getting through that stretch. Tonight they face their real first stiff test. This is a Minster team that does a lot of things very well, mainly rebounding the basketball. They're going to have a very significant size advantage over this Blue Jay team, and we'll see how big of that comes into play. You see teams get better as the season progresses, and... Uh, Minster has been an example of that. As we said, they uh, have won their last seven games in a row after losing six of seven. So they have definitely improved. And as you said, it, it's a it's a size factor. And again, in many cases, you know, basketball is is not that complicated. If you've got guys taller than the other guys, your odds are pretty good. But St. John's has the uh, newest entry in the thousand point club, as uh, Cam Elwer is part of the Blue Jays. He's having a tremendous season as we are underway here with basketball action. The Wildcats controlling early. You mentioned Cam Elwer. We'll be saying his name quite a lot. As the first basket pulled up and made. A nice shot by Cole Richard. Knocks that one down, and that gives us the first points of the game. And Elwer, aforementioned, knocks down. I believe that was a two-pointer. Okay, so that ties it up at two. Elwer did not waste any time there. Richard did a nice job just creating a little bit of space this last time down the floor before uh, to be able to get that shot off. And then Elwer just quickly came down, and that's what makes him so dangerous. You know, teams don't get down quickly. He doesn't take long to, to run the floor. He doesn't need a ton of space. You, know, you, you don't score over 1,000 points halfway through your sophomore year by, on accident. He's a tremendous player, but, you know, Minster with that size and that length, they're going to try to cause some havoc tonight. Yeah, just over 40 career games played for Cam Elwer and already at 1,000 points. And uh, just getting started, there could be a lot more points where that comes from if he can keep up at this pace. Turnover by Minster gives the ball back to the Blue Jays, and here's Elwer again. Step back, long two is up and in. Well, we already mentioned he doesn't need a lot of space. He created a little bit on that step back, and then you're going to have an offensive foul on the other side. And that was Elwer on the defense. He seems to be just about everywhere on the floor at all times. Cole McClurg creating some additional space that the officials didn't appreciate. That's his first. So another uh, turnover early on here for the Wildcats. Long three on the way. That one is short. Wildcats bring it back across the timeline. Back and down underneath. That shot there is short. Right now, both teams coming out playing that man-to-man. -man. This one's going to get poked away, though. As Elwer was trying to drive. Good Got defense it again. by Minster. And that's going to go back the other way. So the Wildcats so far not been able to get any stability on offense, forcing turnovers or having turnovers, fouls and whatnot. And that gives the advantage early on to the Blue Jays. Yeah, you can just tell Minster right now not quite settled here in the early going. They know this is the big game. They came into today 3-2 and two in conference play. They want to keep their hopes alive for that conference championship. They've got to come away with a victory as Elwer got into that trap. We're going to have another whistle. So I believe it's going to be the third team foul already. Maybe just the it was second. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the first foul on Albers. That's the second team foul. Uh, trap of point in midcourt. Elwer trying to get out of it. Does. And there's going to be a push called. 
against James Niemeyer. So now, Nate, they've got three team fouls. Yeah, just a little bit of foreshadowing on that one. Yeah, right. yeah exactly. <laughs> And so Niemeyer, he did was a little bit of contact right there. He, if he would have just stood straight up, I think he still would have accomplished what he was trying to. As right. St. John's player was falling into the backcourt, trying to give him a little bit of that extra nudge there, and the official right there to call it. And another foul is going to be racked up as Minster has uh, more fouls than points at this point, and that's McClurg's second. So he will head to the seat, uh, head to the bench, and. Mike McClurg, head coach, is going to have to go to the bench. Connor Smeezing is going to check in, the 5'8 junior, for the Wildcats. Yeah, Minster trying to be aggressive defensively to cause some turnovers. And they're going to have to back it down. Four fouls already in this quarter. One more, and St. John's will be going to the free throw line. Elwer with the fadeaway is short. Niemeyer with the rebound, and now we'll see if Minster can get something going here. How about that? Just take it pillar to post for two points. And sometimes that's the easiest way to get things going. Don't try to do anything fancy, just drive. And he got into the lane, able to get that one in for two. And now here's Elwer. He will penetrate in trouble, passes it off. Austin Mentor, and then he will pass it off. Aaron Mentor from downtown, rims in and out. Rebound controlled by Delphus, and it is going to go back to Minster. Probably not the shot they were hoping for Mentor to take on that trip down. Almost able to get it to go through, but right now, well, fortunately for Minster, able to get that one back. Have an opportunity here to take a lead for the first time today. Tyce McLean and Joel Schrader checking in for the Blue Jays. All knotted up at four. Three minutes gone by here in the Ricker Lawn and Landscape first quarter. Controlled to Cole Richard, looking to drive in, loses the handle of the basketball. Rugby scum controlled by St. John's. Cam comes up with it. Back the other way, this is Austin Mentor. Mentor in traffic, kicks it back out. Drive and kick action, here's McLean from downtown around the rim and out, rebound by Schrader. Can't get it and that will go out of bounds, last touched by the Wildcats. St. John's doing a nice job underneath, giving themselves a second opportunity there. Schrader fought for that loose ball. And gives St. John's here the second opportunity as Elwer tries to drive. Kicks out. Andrew Elwer, his shot no good. Cole Albers with the rebound. And the 6'8 sophomore asserting himself there in the paint to get that. Minster trying to establish things down low as Cole Albers was going to work, trying to get some positioning. As you see another whistle, Schrader going to pick up that foul. That's his first, and that'll be the first against Delphi St. John's here in the first quarter. Inbound, shot is no good. Working around, thought about the long shot there for a moment, did Drew Boggs, and now McLean kicks out back to Andrew Elwer. Now McLean trying to find some chinks in that Wildcat armor. And Elwer will just pull up from 18 feet and drains it. Nothing was working, the offense was a little stagnant, so Elwer just decided to handle it himself. And Right there, you get an idea of why he's so good. Just raise up over everyone and shoot it. That's successful more often than you think. Minster missed an opportunity that time. Schrader came wide open underneath yeah. the basket. Got a little bit behind as Elwer had fallen asleep on defense. Couldn't handle that inbounds and it's gonna go back to St. John's. Richards long jumper, no good. Blue Jays back on the attack. Here's Elwer, that one swatted away by Richard. Scrum for the basketball and we're gonna have a foul as McLean was hustling, trying to get the basketball, and collided with a Wildcat. That will be his first and the second on the team. And Smeezy did a great job, a great hustle play to get to that one, keep that one alive. And he had to come in once uh, McClure had picked up his second foul, but since he came in, he's given this team a little bit of a shot in the arm. The Wildcats have been able here to uh, get a couple extra turnovers, give themselves a couple extra opportunities. Certainly a needed boost here as we 
are under three minutes here in the first quarter. It's a 6-4 lead for the Blue Jays. Here's Sweeterman St. having John. to pass it out. Go ahead. St. John's doing a fantastic job of keeping Minster from out underneath the basket. That's going to lead to a turnover. Turnover, McLean, and poking it out of his hand is Connor Smeezing, and he is going to be called for the foul, and that will send the Blue Jays to the line. Looked like a pretty good hustle play by Smeezing, but yep. got a little bit too much of the arm that time. And St. John's defense getting things going and trying to turn that defense into offense. So that'll put McLean at the line for a Burke Petroleum free throw. 76% from the line, and that will go down a little bit. Now 10 of 14 from the charity stripe on the season. Yeah, we're seeing uh, what is rather rare, and that's somebody other than Cameron Elworth <laughs> shooting a free throw. He's made, or he's attempted 131 this year. You add up the rest of the free throws attempted by the rest of this team, and it doesn't even come to that. <laughs> the next closest guy is Austin Mentor at 22 attempts. <laughs> I wonder who they're keying in on. <laughs> Three-pointer on the way. That one is long. Elwer Sky in for the rebound. Using pull force that one a little bit. Didn't have the greatest look. Minster just kind of trying to slow things down. They're trying to force things, but it's not on the inside. Trying to just kind of force up those outside shots. And not getting a whole lot going. And we're going to have another foul. At Minster defense, I mean, it's been active. They've been trying to get after yep. it, but, you know, just too much contact here. Ian Homan gets his first foul. In the bonus, uh, still really is uh, St. John's. That'll put Aaron Minter at the line. Five of nine from the charity stripe. This Burke Petroleum free throw is up and good. Drew Boggs in there for a moment. He comes back out. Andrew Elwer, Cam Elwer, Aaron and Austin Minter, and Tice McLean in there for the Blue Jays in the second Burke Petroleum free throw is good. That one tipped into the air. Another turnover forced by the Blue Jay defense. Now here's McLean. And once again drawing contact. This is a foul against Noah Schwederman. And the foul situation is already of a concern here if you're a Mr. Wildcat fan. Yeah, even though that these team fouls are going to reset at the end of this quarter, he's got a lot of players that they rely on to give them good minutes in this game, already starting to rack up one, two fouls. They're going to have to be careful. And the other thing it's done is it's allowed this St. John's team to extend this lead. It's been a while since we've seen the Wildcats put one in the net. And they're going to find themselves down now seven. Burke Petroleum free throw is good. Under two minutes remaining in the first quarter. Blue Jays' last five points have all been at the charity stripe. As the Wildcats are still looking to establish some type of rhythm on offense. Only two field goals here in the first quarter for the Wildcats. They're trying to run through the screen, but then cut off immediately by Mentor. Did a nice job working through it. Trying nope. to get that block, but Mentor's going to get whistled for that foul. Brogan, Steefy. Attacking the basket, and Aaron Minter getting his foul, first foul of the night. Team's third. So that'll put Steffi at the line. 81% from the charity stripe. 44 or 54 on the season. Hopefully I didn't just jinx him. I didn't. <laughs> Burke don't, Petroleum free throw is good. Don't have to worry about those letters coming in quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> we really want that guy to stop talking about how well they shoot. <laughs> because they just miss it. And so trying to go back to the sides, you see Albers and Niemeyer come back into the game. Second Burke Petroleum free throw is good. First points in a while for the Wildcats. One nineteen left in the first quarter, a five point lead for Delphi St. John's. Here's Elwer working against James Niemeyer. Cutting inside, and he will draw the foul. That's going to go against, I believe, they're going to get Niemeyer on that, and that's his second. 
And Niemeyer just checked back into the game during the last stoppage as well. Elward back at the line for two more. This Burke Petroleum free throw up and good. I don't know if part of the plan of attack tonight for head coach Aaron Elward was to attack and uh, force them into committing fouls, but if it was, it has gone completely according to plan so far in the third, first quarter. Yeah, they they have been in full attack mode the entire time. And, you know, for a team that isn't incredibly deep and doesn't go to their bench very often, they don't, they have a a core looks about about six, maybe seven that they that they play pretty regularly. You know, the, these fouls racking up here in the first could really come in and loom large as we move through. Yeah. Without a doubt, and especially if they're going to continue to be aggressive, they're going to continue to attack the basket. You, know, you don't want to just let them waltz into the paint. You have to do something. And we'll see if any adjustments are made as this game progresses. McClurg off balance, gets it to go. And that's what they needed to do. They have to find some way to get this Blue Jay defense to give them a little bit of room. And there has not been much moving. McClurg finally able to get into the lane, absorb that contact. And has the opportunity for the old-fashioned three-point play. Colin Feathers entered into the contest and picked up his first foul. Fourth on the team. And it does complete the old-fashioned three-point play. Down to 45 seconds remaining. So I think they may have given that point to the wrong they, side. Indeed they did. 13 to 9 is the correct score. They've got 14 to 8. I'm sure that there are a lot of Minster fans very unhappy <laughs> that the uh, visitors already got an extra point. That's not usually one of the mistakes you see at, yeah. at the home court. Usually that goes the other way. Aaron Minster holding it near half court. As long as Cole Albers lets him, that is. 17 seconds. Austin Mentor working against Richard. Into the hands of Elwers. We go under 10. Pull up, sideline. No good. And out of bounds. And I think it will stay down here. You know, we mentioned that, you know, coming in, at least on paper, it looked like Minster was going to have the size advantage. And they have been phenomenal on the boards. They lead the MAC in rebounding this season, but St. John's has done a great job. Three ball at the end, no good. We'll come back to that here in just a second. 13 to nine, St. John's on top of Minster. You're watching high school basketball action here on WOSN. Welcome back. This next quarter is sponsored by Ricker Lawn and Landscape. Contact Ricker Lawn and Landscape for all your lawn care needs, including fertilization and weed control programs, aerating, hydro seeding, and irrigation service, installation, and more. Also, our scoreboard tonight brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. And tonight's instant replay, sponsored by Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple. Second quarter, he's Nate, I'm Patrick. Welcome, Minster High School, Mr. Elementary School. Second quarter, 13 to nine. St. John's with the lead and Looking uh, pretty good, and the uh, the big story of the first quarter so far, Nate, is uh, there have been a lot of fouls that Minster has racked up, and that could be a problem here down the road. Yeah, it could. I mean, on the other hand of that, all those fouls that we saw, we saw St. John's have to go to the free throw line quite a bit. That's what put them out to this lead. But at one point, Minster found themselves down seven. St. John's was starting to kind of establish um, a, a little bit of a, of a rhythm. The momentum seemed to be in their favor, but. Minster fought their way back, made this a four-point game before the end of the quarter. St. John's basketball as we get the second quarter underway. Elwer working down low, looking to pass it off, and does the Minter. Elwer kicks out, three ball on the way by Austin Minter, and that Matt Segan cooling three-pointer is up and good. 
St. John's needed that as Cam Elwer had eight of their 13 points prior to that basket. They're going to need somebody else to start stepping up, getting a few baskets here to try to ease up this defense. Another Matt Seating and cooling three-pointer up and good. This time Brogan Steefe. Here's Elwer, pull up around 16 feet, no good. Elber is able to, well, I thought he saved it going out of bounds, but he did not. Yeah, good hustle play, Elber almost got to, was almost able to save that. As we're seeing right now, Elwer come up just a little bit short on his last few shots, not something we used to see. I'm sure he'll make the adjustment, but if you're Minster, you want to take advantage of this little stretch here where he's gone kind of cold. Uh-oh, and an unforced turnover there as Feathers loses it out of bounds. Metal step is awful unforgiving. I'm glad he was yeah. okay as he slammed into that pretty hard. I, I just watched that and I think my ribs are sore. <laughs> Broken nice handles. Broken Stevie pull up. 17 footer doesn't get the shooter's roll. Here comes St. John's, Elwer off balance, gets it to go. Elwer's just creating at this point. He just went down. He knew that there was going to be contact coming, and that one gets swatted away. McLean gets it back. Thought about the three-pointer, passes it off. Now Minter, Minter cut it all alone, takes it untouched. I'm not sure if that was designed to go that way or somehow the, the C just happened to part as Mentor had a wide open lane. I don't know, you'll get much easier than that. Timeout here on the floor, 6.09 left in the second quarter. We'll be back here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Burke Petroleum, now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available. 800-776-3079. Dependable has certainly been Cam Elwer here in the early going of this one. 10 of St. John's 20 points. Just two minutes gone in the second quarter, and St. John's with their largest lead of the night so far, 20-12. And they've been able to open up this lead because it hasn't been just Elwer here in the quarter. He started to get some help from some of his teammates. We've seen a couple of big baskets by Mentor as they have done a nice job and that's helped open this up to an eight point lead. And the Wildcats still really looking for any kind of rhythm on offense. There's Albers, second chance, put back is up and good. And that's what Minster thought that they would be able to do coming into this game, give themselves second and third opportunities at the rim. Up until about that possession, really, the Blue Jays had done a great job of keeping them out of the lane, keep that ball from going to the inside as one more time, Elhorn gets another two. He starts and stops so well, that hesitation mm -hmm. just really gets defenses a lot of problems. I don't know if that was a scoop shot or a circus shot, but either way, it goes down. And it's a 22-14 St. John's lead. Ball back out, McClurg passes it off to Steffi. Here's a Matt's heating and cooling three-pointer is short. And Elwer, he'll pull up for his own Matt's heating and cooling three, and that one doesn't go. Richard back the other way for the Wildcats. And has the ball ripped away from him by Austin Mentor to Elwer, lead pass, left hand up and in. Nice run out that time, all started by Austin Mint. That's already his second steal here of the quarter. That has done a, led to a more points as this Blue Jay defense continues to get to work, cause Minster all sorts of issues. And they're doing a good job of turning that defense into offense. And an offensive foul, that three-pointer will not count. And it has been a struggle here, the first moments of this contest for the Minster Wildcats. Haven't been able to establish much of a rhythm on offense. They've turned over the ball quite a bit. They just really haven't looked comfortable. Haven't been able to get comfortable in running any kind of offense here in the first uh, 12 minutes of this game. Yeah, every time they start to kind of look like maybe they have some, some cohesiveness, they've been able to hit a couple of big shots. You see things like that, like Mentor who just went around and 
They have an injured Wildcat. Niemeyer took a hard hit as he came down on his ankle, so he's gonna, looks like he's okay, but he's gonna have to go take a seat over there and kind of get himself together a little bit. Yeah, indeed, Noah Schwederman will check in for him in, in the meantime, and he will inbound. So right now, Minster, they just have to string together more than just one play. They were able to come through, a nice basket made right there. Now they've got to be able to do this repetitively. We've seen those in spurts, but then they, you know, St. John's has answered with two or three baskets. It's been a while since Minster's had back-to-back -back possessions where they've been able to cash in. That was uh, seven points for Stevie. As he has the significant bulk of Minster's points. Here's Elwer. Around and can't get it to go, but able to slap it back into the hands of McLean. St. John's maintains possession. 3.30 left in the first half. Around now, here is Elwer. Kick out. Minter thought about the three-pointer. Said he takes it in. Off balance, up and in. Take it. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, just great uh, concentration that time by Aaron Mentor. That one got poked away, but to be able to keep track of it, but gather it back in and put it up. I'll tell you, you have those days. Sometimes you wake up, the sun is shining, the birds are singing, you get the right parking spot, you find the $5 bill in the parking lot. Everything is just kind of going your way, and that's the kind of night Delphi St. John's is having right now. McClure's shot does not go. Mentor with the rebound. McLean all alone. Matt Segan cooling three is no good. Off the top of the backboard. And it'll be Minster basketball. So Drew Boggs checking in for St. John's. Two thirty-six remaining here in the first half. It's a 12-point St. John's lead. Blue Jays looking to extend their record to 15-2, 6-0 in the MAC. Working it around. Stevie, he'll try a Matt Teague and cooling three, and that one is off and attempted save by Ian Homan. Takes a hard fall, but comes right back up. That'll be St. John's basketball. You know, we talked about Minster's offense and just the struggles that they're having right now, but I think you really got to credit the majority of that to this Blue Jay defense. As Minster, I think they're just kind of putting some shots up right now that they obviously don't want, but it's almost just out of frustration. Nothing else is working. I got a little bit of space. Let's put that one up, and yeah. that's kind of what the one from Steffi looked like that time. Elwer, quick pull up from the foul line and knocks it down. His ability to create that space and pull up in rhythm. I mean, he, he does not miss that very often. He is deadly with that shot right around the free throw line. At any level, that, that shot is difficult to stop, but if you can pull it off at the high school level, it is just about unbeatable. Here's Albers, and Albers has the ball stripped away from him. And a foul will be called. That's going to go against Schrader. His second foul. Inbound underneath. Albers has it top of the key into the hands of Richard. Minster trailing by 14, trying to get back into it. Richard, Matt, he's going three, knocks it down. And that's what they need is Richard was left all alone as the double team went inside on Albers. Great heads up play by Albers to find his teammate. Elwer passing it off to Andrew Elwer, now to McLean. And we're going to have a foul. This is against, I think they got sneezing for that. Yeah, yeah they're they're trying to work through the screen that time. And Use a little bit too much of that elbow to try <laughs> to fight through that. The official was right there to call for it. Now he's going to talk to Smeezing and Elwer, kind of get things to calm down a little bit as Smeezing getting a little bit aggressive down there. And already not. <laughs> he just talked to him about the elbow. 
Yeah, he walked, the official walked away, and Schmeezing promptly put his forearm into Elmer's chest. Not menacingly, just, you know. So we're back to it here. Schmeezing and Elwert. Elwert working around off the glass and in. You know, Cam Elwert's one of those players where, you know, I, I know what defenses want to do. You want to try to frustrate them. You want to try to see if you can't cause some mistakes. I mean, he's one of those guys where you don't like to have to poke the bear, and it kind of seemed like that time after yeah. all the extracurriculars, Elward just decided he was going to put an end to it pretty quickly. And, you know, with the shooting success that he's had in this game, he's got 18 points. It's one of those where, you know, it, it is possible to frustrate guys, obviously, but he's built kind of a cushion, so it's not necessarily that you're going to slap the ball out of his hands or get physical, and that's going to rattle him immediately. Like, you'd have to do that for an extended period of time. And it's it's just been too good of a game so far for Elwer to that for that to have any real success, at least at this point in the game. 21 seconds left in the half. 32-19 Blue Jays. Looking to hold for final shot. Here's Minter. Minter. Near half court. Takes it almost all the way in. Now eight seconds. Here's Elwer. Guarded by Smeezing, step back, Matt's eating, including three, and knocks it down. And quite the exclamation point for this first half as the Blue Jays have a 35 to 19 lead. 21 points for Cam Elwer in the first half. We will be back for a Ricker Lawn and Landscape halftime when we come back here on WOSN. It is halftime here in Minster. 35-19, Delta St. John's with the lead over the Wildcats. Halftime is sponsored by Ricker Lawn and Landscape. Contact Ricker Lawn and Landscape for all your lawn care needs, including fertilization and weed control programs, aerating, hydro seeding, irrigation service, and installation, and more. Nate Garlock, it has been, I don't know if it's been all Delphi St. John's here in the first half. It has certainly been all Cam Elwer in the first half. But I'll tell you what, the defense for St. John's has done a really good job. Minster has just never looked settled in this game through the first 16 minutes. Yeah, and I think that's really the story. I mean, at the end of the day, I think everybody knows when you when you, you cover or you watch or you hear about a Delphi St. John's game, you're going to hear a lot about Cam Elwer. That's uh, he's that good of a player. That's what the offense runs through. He's also great on the other side of the ball. He's all over the place. But that Blue Jay defense as a whole has done a tremendous job of shutting down Minster, especially on the inside. They have not been able to get the ball to the inside to Cole Albers at all. Every time they've tried, immediately the help has come from the backside. We've seen him have a couple of steals that way. When they've been able to get that away cleanly and Minster's been able to find the open man, we've seen some shots, but it's been so sporadic that they just can't string together possessions back to back to back where they've had success. And on the other side of that, St. John's doing a great job of turning those defense and those turnovers into offense. Cam Elwer has been fantastic as always. We saw some really nice shots he's been able to make from behind the arc in rhythm. He's done a nice job through the lane as well. So right now, Minster's just got to find the one thing that they want to do and then just focus on that. Get that going, be able to have success on that one thing, and then try to build from there. Brogan Stevie with seven points in the first half. Cole Richard with five. They're your two leading scorers. Again, have not really been able to establish any kind of rhythm or get settled. And you have to think, you know, those are your leaders on this team, at least as far as scoring goes. Uh, a comeback in this game is going to have to involve one or both of those guys getting going and getting the offense uh, rolling around here in the second half. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, their, their offense has to find some way to obviously get things rolling. And we've seen some, some pretty good play at times out of those players. And then they've got to find a way to shut down the other people on St. John's. We know Cam is going to get his points. But if you look at the supporting cast right now from St. John's, they're also contributing. Mm -hmm. You look at Aaron Mentor, he averages just over six points a game. He had nine there in that first in that first half. We've also seen some other shots go up. There have been other guys contributing, and Minster's got to find a way to shut them down as well. 
One of the successes that Elida had earlier in the season was, yeah, Elwood's going to get his points. If we stop everybody else, uh, we have a good shot of winning the contest. And it's going to take some of that from Minster in order to come back and have a chance in this one. That has been the Ricker Lawn and Landscape Halftime Show. When we come back, we'll have the third quarter action for you here from Minster. It is 35-19, Delta St. John's on top of the Wildcats. You're watching high school basketball action here on WOSN. Welcome back, third quarter. Ricker Lawn and Landscape, third quarter. You can contact Ricker Lawn and Landscape for all your lawn care needs, including fertilization and weed control programs, aerating, hydro seeding, irrigation service, insulation, and more. It's a 35 19 lead for St. John's over Minster. The Wildcats will try to claw back into this one off balance shot by Richard. And I'll tell you what, that is how you want to start it. Yeah, but that's exactly what they needed to do. They've been trying to go inside the entire game, and they just couldn't get things going, and immediately it was a nice cross there in the middle and left Richard wide open. And uh, Matt's hitting a cooling three, goes down, and again, that's how you want to do it. Richard with five points off the jump, has 10 in the game, and it's down to 11-point lead. Now Elwer with a three ball of his own, does not go, and the ball out of bounds. And it goes to Minster. And this is exactly what we said Minster was going to have to find a way to do. They had to string together back to back to back um, uh, positive possessions and start kind of turning in more than just a one and done and where they let St. John's then have multiple possessions of their own. Here they've come out of the locker room doing exactly that. Stevie and he pulls up this shot no good. And that one unexpected coming down there and we're going to have a timeout by St. John to talk this one over just like that it's an 11 point lead you're watching high school basketball action on WOSN Welcome back tonight. Three point sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. It is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. 5 0 run here for the Wildcats and having another turnover. It will be Minster basketball. Coach, Fifth, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, Coach Elwer was not happy with that effort coming out. So three straight possessions that were either turnovers or empty possessions, and he wanted to get his team together, try to get them refocused here as Minster's come out of the locker room on fire. Another basket goes down. A 7-0 run to begin the third quarter for the Wildcats. Just what the home crowd wanted to see, and just what Coach Mike McClurg wanted to see. Here's Minter working underneath. Kicks it back out into the hands of Elwer. Elwer being guarded now by James Niemeyer. So a little additional height. Elwer having some trouble, has the ball poked away again. Rugby scrum for the basketball, and finally corralled by St. John's. Able to save the possession, Andrew Elwer doing so for the Blue Jays. In the first half, those those scrums like that, and that, and, uh, that kind of defense, that aggressiveness that Minster was playing with always resulted in a foul. It was a nice job that time of keeping that aggressiveness up without drawing a whistle, and now they get the turnover. Colin Feather is trying to poke it from behind. And he will be called for the foul. That's his second. Feather was trying to track down Richard. Richard's had the hot hand. Has all seven of Minster's points here to begin this half. Just a little bit too much of that contact as he came through. And I'd imagine that Minster's going to continue to try to put the ball into Richard's hands, at least here in the early going. Schwederman checking in for Niemeyer for Minster. And now Schwederman fed underneath, working on Elwer. That shot a little too long, and the ball tied up. And it was Blue Jay basketball on the tie-up. Looked like Schwederman was anticipating some of that contact, so he put a little extra on that. Contact never came. Nice job, though, of grabbing that one, tying it up. And even though they lose possession, they get that arrow flipped at least back into their yep. favor for the next one. Defense tightening up. Cole McClurg right on. Andrew Elwer, and now working underneath, shot blocked by Richard. McLean having it back around to Elwer. This is Mentor. Mentor cutting in, 
Nowhere to go, kicks it back out. Austin Minter and will have a foul underneath. That is on Cole Richard. Second foul on him. You can just tell the Wildcats right now have kind of found that second wind. Yep. Legs are moving a little bit quicker, and now we get back-to-back -back whistles, though. This is what slowed a lot of things down for them in that first quarter. Once these fouls started racking up, they had no choice. They had to back off, give Minster, or excuse me, Dolphin St. John some space, and that's when we saw Elwer really start to take over. Steffi's first foul, team second. Ball in the hands of Elwer now. And McLean steps out of bounds. <laughs> I, I love a lively student section, but I'm not sure the cheer that I would want to do when Cam Elwer has the basketball is overrated. Yeah, they're chanting <laughs> overrated. And it's like, well, he's got 21 points of their 35. and I love the sentiment, but I'm not sure that's right, the yeah. guy that I want to fire up. Right. <laughs> I love the passion, but, you know, maybe pick your spots. <laughs> <laughs> Austin Mentor with his first foul, team second. First couple minutes, it seemed like that they were going to let him play a little bit more physical, but then the uh, whistles came out much the same way they were in the first quarter. And obviously that physical style of play really helped the Wildcats as they were able to kind of get things going. But as things clamp down, we'll see what adjustments they make as Richard, he turned right into the defense on that one. Cole Albers with a nice sliding. Michael Clerk was trying to get the timeout. Gets the uh, tie up instead. And that possession arrow you were mentioning earlier, Nate, favoring Minster, and they will keep the basketball. And it was a great job, too, by Albers to not move. It, it's okay to grab the ball and you slide on the floor. It's when you start getting that movement, whether you roll on your back or front, that's when you see that traveling call uh, yeah. more, more often than not. And Albers did a great job not doing that, got his team possession, and then he gets him the two points. 9-0 run for Minster, begin the half, down to a seven-point lead for the Blue Jays. Minter, Matt's hitting a cooling three ball is up and good, and a timeout called by St. John's. 4-18 remaining in the third quarter. It's back up to a 10-point lead. You're watching high school basketball action here on WOSN. Welcome back to tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. And tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple. It's a 38-28 lead for St. John's, a 9-0 run by Minster to start the third quarter. And they are trying to claw their way back in this one, and they've had a pretty good start here so far, Nate. So it looks like we're going to have a stoppage here as you saw the official over looking at Cam Elwer. Not sure if he has some blood on the uniform or what, but they're not going to let play here resume. So it looked like maybe one of the uh, athletic trainers take off looking for something to maybe kind of dilute that. So Possibly it went over to, official went over to Aaron Elwer and then Mike McClurg and I don't. I'm not sure if they'll make. Nope, here comes the uh, athletic trainer. Going to try to clean it up. He's going to have to change jerseys, though, so I think he's going to have to come out. Right. There's a lot of shrugs by both coaches. <clears throat> so Aaron Elwer is going to check out. the uh, Someone there for the Blue Jays has a new jersey, so they're going to. Elwer's going to head back to the locker room and get changed up. In the meantime, Aaron Minter is going to check back in as replacement. That Yeah, that would be five. Just. Double checking. Can't blame Coach McClurg. He was like, "Oh, we're gonna go. I mean, if I get, if I get yeah. any time with no, Elwer out of the game, let's help go. you get Cam Elwer back <laughs> yes. into the game." I don't have an extra jersey. Albers controlling it, working back inside, and a foul. Aaron Minter picks up his second. It was a nice job by Albers that time. Is that entry passes came into him at least in that how that first half went. He was immediately putting it on the ground, trying to get the dribble to get position. That time he held on to it for a couple of extra beats, 
And that way when the double team came, the ball wasn't free. And the help had to vacate, left him with the one-on-one. -on -one. Elwer now wearing number 22 for the Blue Jays. I'm sure just what the fans of Minster wanted, twice the Elwer. <laughs> Trying to look inside is Steffi. Leclerc thought about the three ball, drives in, shot is good. Minster offense starting to find their legs now. A lot of these shots that weren't falling, finally been able to get a, a little bit more on them. Here's Mentor taking a strong inside and does 13 points tonight for him. Ten point lead, 40 to 30. Nice pull up there by Steffi, doesn't go. Minter and Elwer have combined for 34 of St. John's 40 points tonight. And now here's Elwer. Working, kicking it out. Boggs passing it off. Free ball on the way by Austin Minter, no good. Richard brings it across the timeline. Albers has it top of the key. Coming up on 2.30 remaining in the third quarter. McClure will pass it off to Richard, has it near the top of the key. Wildcats reset. This is about the longest possession for either team tonight. Yeah, and Minster right now not finding much space. St. John's doing a nice job on the man-to-man. -man. They want to go to the inside here. They finally get it to Albers. Albers looking for that one-on-one. -on -one. Lots of contact coming as Mentor now is going to pick up his third. And I imagine we'll see Mentor take a seat as it looks like that's exactly what's going to happen. Trader's going to come in. And, you know, we talked about, you know, if you're a team playing St. John's, it's, you know, don't let anybody else beat you. You know, you, you know what you're dealing with with Cam Elwer, but it's everybody else you got to try to shut down. Yeah. Mentor tonight has come and been a huge difference maker for this team. And now he's got to take a seat for, I would imagine, you know, let most of this quarter, or the rest of this quarter, and maybe even some of that fourth. So Minster now with an opportunity here to try to draw even closer. Yeah, that's what we mentioned when other teams, as you alluded to, had success against St. John's. It was, you know, Elwer is going to get his points, but if you can keep the other guys you know, kind of the, the old Jordan rules from the 80s. If you can uh, keep the other guys from getting involved, you've got a good shot. Elwer there with a good shot, 23 points for him tonight, back up to a 12-point lead. That shot in rhythm is just so deadly. He does a great job of lowering that shoulder in his head. He doesn't need a whole lot of space. He gets the defense leaning, and then that pull-up is deadly. Massey and cooling three-pointer is up and good by Steffi. And a timeout here on the court, and we will keep it here, 42 to 33, as Minster has uh, come alive here in this third quarter. And a lot of things we said that weren't going their way, uh, they've been able to establish here in the third quarter, Nate. Yeah, they've done a great job making those adjustments. A lot of the things that we saw going wrong in the first half, they've immediately came out and fixed. They've got the offense going in rhythm. They've been able to string back-to-back -back, uh, or consecutive uh, positive possessions together. They've been able to get things going on the inside, so they've looked a lot better. The defense has looked like it's had an extra um, little extra pep in their step as well. So things going well, but, you know, it's still Elwer getting his shots. Mentor's done a great job of getting some shots here as well. And, you know, it's got to get a little bit frustrating if you're Minster. You've managed to close this gap, but right now this 9-10 point difference has been a hurdle. They just haven't been able to get over quite yet. Here's Elwer attacking the rim and gets it to go. Cam Elwer's pretty much controlled chaos at this point. You know, he, he comes in, he's flying, flying through everywhere. He takes so much contact. You see him on the floor all the time, but somehow he always seems to be under control. And Brogan Steffi is... So somebody's bleeding, but I don't know that they've been able to pinpoint it yet. This looks like it's going to be the second player who's had blood come up on their uniform. Well, I think they signaled goaltending, and perhaps Steffi 
got his finger cut. I don't know. There's been a lot more attention to bloodletting than you're used to in a basketball game. In any case, it is a 44-33 lead for St. John's. Minster with the basketball, make it a 44-35 lead. And McClurg at that time, he didn't hesitate. There was a lane there. Nobody was coming over to him, so he just took it. And we'll have a foul underneath. And looks like this is going to go against, that's Niemeyer, and that's his third. Credit to the Wildcats. Looked like they were going to have a lot of guys in foul trouble late in this game, and the guys that picked up two fouls early on, Niemeyer's the only guy who's picked up that third foul, and it hasn't been until about a minute left in the third quarter. And I think what's even more impressive about that is we've seen the intensity here in the second half continue as Elwer. He had enough space. He doesn't need a lot of it. He will put that one down. Matt's heating and cooling three-pointer up and good, 47-35. Elwer averaging just over 28 points a game. That was his 28th here with still a whole quarter left to go. St. John's able to push that lead a little bit more back out. Largest lead of the night, 16 points. It's back up to 12. Leclerc with a long three. That one is short. Blue Jays with a chance to hold for final shot. Austin Mentor bringing it up, brings it, uh, passes it off to Elber. Elwer, he'll try a long three of his own and knocks it down for a Matt City and going three-pointer just before the buzzer. 31 points for Elwer, and it is back up to a 15-point lead. That's the way the end of the second quarter also. 50-35, to 35. we head to the fourth here on WOSN. Welcome back. Berg Petroleum sponsoring our free throws tonight, offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Berg Petroleum, dependable, available, 800-776-3097. Getting ready for the fourth quarter here on WOSN is a 50-35 to lead as the Delphi St. John's Blue Jays uh, losing a point from the second quarter to the third quarter. St. John's going on a 15-7 to run near the end of the third quarter to reestablish a decent lead. And as you said, Nate Garlock on the break, Minster with a great start to the third quarter. And after all that, you only pick up one point on Delphi St. John's. And it almost seemed like it was in a blink of an eye too as Minster looked like they were doing everything right, getting themselves back into this one. But St. John's can score so quickly, mainly just because of the abilities that Cam Elwer has. Right there in that last minute of that third quarter, those back-to-back -back threes that he was able to make. <laughs> I mean, you look up and you find yourself back down 15. And, you know, that's why it's difficult to play this St. John's team. I mean, it can, it can be frustrating. It can be back-breaking. You know, you're trying to dig yourself out of a hole against this team is very, very difficult. Burke Petroleum free throw up and good for Joel Schrader. 66% from the charity stripe this season. Knocks them both down. And just like that, largest lead of the night for St. John's, 52 to 35. It was a 9-0 third quarter start for the Wildcats, and then St. John's took control near the end of the third quarter, going on a 15 to seven run. That will run now at 17 to seven. Schmeezing saves that one from going out of bounds. There's a heads up play too, because I don't, Schmeezing definitely wasn't expecting that one. He was moving as that one got tipped. Able to gather that one in to help maintain this possession. Inside to Albers. And Andrew Elward picks up number one. That was right back to what we were seeing pretty much that entire first half was as soon as Albers get it, he would try to turn to be able to get it up at the rim. And St. John's was doing a fantastic job of sending that extra help. That's what happened right there. Elward that time, though, not, away, not able to get it cleanly. Steffi, shot no good. Albers with the rebound, and then he is fouled. That one's going to go on Cam Elwer as he was there trying to swap that one away. That is Cam's first. Team second. That'll put Cole Albers at the foul line. 68% from the charity stripe this season. First Burke Petroleum free throw is up and good.
Second free throw for Albers is good. So Albers will check out after hitting both free throws. Ian Holman in for the Wildcats. And the defensive pressure ramping up a bit from Minster. Tice McLean has it. Elwer double teamed and wrapped up as Holman is assessed the foul. That's his second. Team Minster now just trying to throw that trap at Elwer since he gets that basketball, hoping that maybe they can force a mistake. They've got to try to find a way to get some turnovers here. They might be using Holman and Albers as kind of a two-headed monster on defense. We'll see if that turns out to be the case or if I have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. And I'll tell you what, the latter has been true more often than not. <laughs> And a tie-up is going to be a foul instead. That'll be the second on Albers. Albers not take that back. It's his third. But, and Albers got tied up. He tried to reach in there and take that one away from Munter. But as uh, Munter went to turn away, Albers couldn't get his hand out of there. So that's what caused the foul. Third team foul. Step back, shot. I'll tell you what, Elwer just makes that look so easy. Yeah, it's not supposed to be that simple. <laughs> it really is not. And Albert shot. Can't get that one to go, and that will stay down here with Minster. And I tell you what, you want to get an idea on how difficult that is. Of course, we've had a lot of simplified flooring instant replays of this one tonight. Watch that step back, see how Elwer does it, and then go into your, your driveway or the local gym, whatever, and try that shot on your own and just see how it goes for you. We're not responsible if you injure yourself, <laughs> but give it a shot. Matt Seaton, including three-pointer, no good. Corralled by St. John's. Elwer with a Matt Seaton, including three-pointer, and knocks it down. Tickles the twine with a triple. 36 points tonight for Elwer. He has 36, Minster has 37. Here's a long pass. Elwer with numbers and gets it to go. Lots of contact. The Blue Jay faithful not happy about the no whistle that time. But sometimes I think if you're an official, it can, it can almost be more difficult to officiate a game with a player like Elwer. You know how good he is. You, you know how efficient he can be. But he plays so fast. And like it's like that controlled chaos. Mm -hmm. He's going to fly around. He's going to hit the floor a lot. It's not always because of contact. So when the contact does happen, and it looks a lot like what happens when there is no contact. It, right. It's yeah. difficult at times to officiate that game because you definitely don't want him taking a lot of hard contact. You don't want to risk any injuries to him. Um, but you also can't be blowing a whistle every time you see him hit the floor because that's just part of his game. Right, and it is counterintuitive. Maybe as folks that are watching that to think that just because your particular player hits the floor on a play doesn't mean there's been a foul. And as you said, just kind of the way he plays, that speed that he has, that aggressiveness that he has, sometimes you're just attacking and you, you fall down. And if you're Coach Elwer, you, you know, I'm sure you would like to not see him hit the ground as often as Absolutely. he does. But you can't take that away from what he does, the speed and the aggressiveness and, and, the, and the way that he's able to get to the basket. That's what makes him so good. Able to get down and call the timeout is Austin Minter as Elwer was on the bench that last sequence. We'll take a timeout as well. 442 left in the contest. It's a 22-point lead for St. John's. You're watching high school basketball action on WOSN. Welcome back. Our three-point sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. And did you know you can stream the WOSN channel anytime, anywhere for only eight bucks a month. Download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wosn.tv. And in the true spirit of Groundhog Day, 
you can watch this game over and over and over. <laughs> well, I'm sure if you're the Minster fans, you're not going to be in much of a hurry to see this one ever again if you can help it. You, uh, you might be looking forward to a matchup with uh, Jackson Center coming up uh, in the land of the Airstream coming up tomorrow night. For the Blue Jays, they will head back to the Vatican to take on Lincoln View in an out-of-conference matchup. And we'll have a whistle as Tice McLean lost his headband. You know, we talked about, um, especially early in this game, in Minster, you know, they lead the conference in rebounding. And that looked like that was going to be hopefully a path to victory here tonight was controlling the boards, you know, getting themselves second, third opportunities with offensive rebounds and, and trying to use that height that they have to try to neutralize the St. John's team. Delta St. John's so far tonight has more than doubled up Minster on rebounds. They have just absolutely dominated things off of the glass. And that's just an, another facet of this game, you know, the strength of Minster, St. John's came in tonight and found a way to completely take that away. Yeah, they absolutely did. And you've just seen the the, the, the physicality and the fact that Minster kind of got behind early, not just on the scoreboard, but with fouls. And, that, and when you uh, gather fouls that quickly, it just changes your mindset. It has to because you have to start playing a little safer. You don't want to get three, four fouls in the, in the first half. And, you know, it's just been a lot of those things where they've just gone the Blue Jays' way. And the Wildcats had that spurt and just have not been able to get anything else besides that here tonight. Tice McLean at the line to shoot two, and that first Burke Petroleum free throw is good. Second Burke Petroleum free throw is up and good. Nine zero run for the Blue Jays. As Delphi St. John's has taken full command of this one here tonight at Minster. Now we talked about um, you know the, the start that Minster got off to in this half and how they kind of crawled themselves back into this game. You know, but you got to give a lot of credit to Coach Elwer when he saw started to see those runs happening and he saw his team not come out of the locker room ready to go like he'd like. We saw about three really quick timeouts from him. Even when St. John started to kind of look like maybe they were getting back to him, he took another one. He really did a nice job of managing that third quarter, using those timeouts to get his team refocused and make sure that they found a way to slow down that Minster run. And obviously it was effective as they've been able to balloon this out to a, what is now a 24-point lead. Yeah, without a doubt, we'll have a foul here. Trying to reach in on Elwer. That's going to be on McClurg. I believe that'll be his third. And that will put Elwer at the line. Chance to get 40 tonight once again. Hits the first Burke Petroleum free throw. And it could be another 40-point night for Cam Elwer. See Grant Alm coming into the game for the first time tonight as Coach Elwer now going to his bench. Get some of the the regulars out, and that might be it for Elwer, and it is as Braden Klaus is going to check in. 40 points once again as Cam Elwer just continues to have an onslaught on, on that scoring ability, and I'm sure more scoring records are going to continue to fall as he moves through the rest of his high school career. Without a doubt, Braden Klaus checking in for St. John's. Basket going, 63-39, St. John's on top. You know, and under three left to go, St. John's with, with a big lead. But if you're Coach Elwer, these are big minutes. Even with getting all in here, you, know, you have Elwer on the bench because this is when you got to start trying to develop some of these guys to be able to contribute and to be able to you know, um, impact the game if Elwer's either out of the game or when defensive is focused on him. Some of these, especially was, you know, it's February. We have to start looking towards tournament now. The draw's only a few short weeks away. You know, we're, before we know it, you know, we're going to be on the road to Dayton. And this St. John's team obviously has big goals that they want to accomplish. 
but tournament play is different. It, it, I mean, it yes. is a different environment. It's a different mentality. Um, everything ramps up, and if you're Coach Elwer, you need these guys to be able to not have to be on the floor and think, well, it's okay, Cam Elwer will just take care of it. There's got to be other guys that they know can step up when necessary. Yeah, and, and, you, and as much as you like seeing 40 points, this first Burke Petroleum free throw is up and good by Colin Feathers. As much as you like seeing guys like Cam Elwer get 40 points, you know, if you're Aaron Elwer, you've got to like the fact that you got so many points out of Aaron Mentor tonight that you've got an opportunity to see some of the other guys come in and contribute. Um, you know, you've got a chance to have Braden Klaus come in. You've got a chance to have Grant Ulm come in and really try and get some of those additional uh, minutes from these guys because it's going to be difficult in the tournament if you want to make a serious run to, to run 6-7 deep, and you're going to run into those teams that can run a little deeper than that, and you're going to have to be able to know that, okay, there's some guys, as you said, you can have someone else besides Cam Elwer step up and get points for you. McClurg putting that one up and in. I'm sorry, didn't miss, miss that one. Boggs controlling the basketball. Alm did a nice job right yeah. under the baseline that time. Came wide open, but just got a little bit too far underneath the basket. And I think that just goes to what exactly we were talking about. Some of these guys just haven't spent a lot of time on the floor yet. They got to get a little bit more comfortable. They got to be able to come in and, and be able to execute like that. And, you know, that's why you know these minutes are, are so important to some of these players, especially a, a somebody like Grant Alm that you want to be able to bring in. He's a tremendous athlete. You, you know what he's capable of doing. So let's get him out there and give him some time. Now Kloss with the basketball as we come up on the final minute. Alm has it, guarded by Smeesing and Andrew Kettner. And we'll have some more substitutions as both coaches get the benches fully going in this one. Evan Pringer checking in, as well as Dominic Meyer for Minster. Try and mention these young men as we can. Kloss controlling the basketball for the Blue Jays as we come up on the final minute of this one. Strong take inside. How about that by Drew Boggs? 27-point lead for Delphi St. John's. Kicks that one back out. Matt sitting and cooling three by Andrew Kettner to knock that one down. 66-42 as we are coming up in the final moments of this one. I want to thank Abby Beck and Jacob O'Neill for getting things set up and helping us out with this one here tonight. And the folks at WOSN helping to assemble this one and get it so you can take it in with your eyeballs as that is a final here tonight. 66 to 42, the final here from Mr. Delta St. John's, improving to 6 and 0 in conference and 15 and 2 overall. That will wrap up our coverage of this one tonight for Nate Garlock and our entire WOSN staff. I'm Patrick Hamler saying so long, everyone from Minster.